Let me bring in James D. Simone now. Uh, James, talk to me about what you thought when you were watching that line of questioning by the prosecutor. Well, again, this is a juror that can go both ways, and you uh, had the feeling that maybe the uh, prosecution would let her go, although she is an advocate for the homeless, for affordable housing. You know, that would show someone who has a, a caring disposition, and you want people who are, you know, are going to have empathy for, for George Floyd. So, and, and, you know, what ended up happening here because of the bombshell drop of the $27 million settlement for the family of George Floyd, the prosecution was only given one additional peremptory strike, but the defense was given three more. So a three to one ratio, very different from the 15 to nine that they start out with. So yes, the state really has to be careful about exercising the, those peremptory strikes. But I would point this out. There is a significant amount of time on that videotape that George Floyd is not speaking and he is not breathing and Derek Chauvin is not removing his knee from his neck. So that alone doesn't take away his guilt, of course, just because this has this preconceived notion of if someone could talk, that means they must be breathing. Right, right. Those four minutes are going to be critical. That was something that forensic pathologist Dr. Cyril Wecht really emphasized when 